Thanks. Um, I was going to structure my remarks around four broad headings. Um, first, to highlight, as I was asked to do, the linkages between this research and um, other recent research. Um, secondly, just to pick out some of the things I really liked about the research and to say how I think it adds value to the, the broader um, literature. Thirdly, to mention some concerns and some points for reflection that I think ought to come out of the research, and then to address this issue that always comes up about how donors can respond. Okay, so links with other research. And I'm sure that um, <coughs> many of you will be struck as I was about the, excuse me, <coughs> um, the common themes emerging from a lot of recent research. Um, I think uh, Heidi already mentioned, sorry, I'm going to stop and just take a glass. Please, please do. <coughs> um, Heidi mentioned already Matt Andrews' book um, on the limited impact of top-down institutional reform and the damage it can do. I think there are a, a lot of linkages between this research and that. Um, some recent research by... Mansouri and Rao on the limited impact of large-scale externally driven efforts to induce community participation. Um, the APP research on uh, development as a collective action problem. Um, some uh, research that's been posted recently uh, on a blog called Local First, which some of you may have come across. And if you haven't, um, I do think it's worth taking a look at. It's um, emphasizing the importance of looking first for local capacity and local leadership. Um, and then some earlier stuff, you know, Bill Easterly on searchers, not planners, um, work that I was involved in, <coughs> upside down governance that says, start with where the country is, not with where you would like it to be. And all of this research, it seems to me, is saying, um, uh, think about the importance of context, of local political support, of building on local capacity, of finding ways to facilitate local problem solving. And so they do point to um, developing approaches to designing aid interventions that are flexible on long term and encourage ongoing learning and local problem solving. So it seems to me that there is a kind of critical mass of recent research and previous research that is um, pointing in this similar kind of direction. Um, some things that I specifically liked about unblocking results. Uh, I liked the focus on explaining success um, and on how to make progress within a challenging environment um, without necessarily aspiring to um, change it in a, in a radical way. Um, I like the... Um, way I think the research which builds on the, the broader APPP research adds value by saying not just context matters um, but to identify some common governance constraints that seem to apply across different cases and uh, certainly to some extent ac across different contexts. So uh, this identification of um, institutional and policy incoherence of weak top-down performance disciplines of limited scope for local problem solving. I think that that's actually a pretty um, useful, interesting way of starting your analysis, provided it's, of course, provided it's applied intelligently and it doesn't get in the way of seeing other things that might be there. I like the focus on implementation, on closing gaps between the formal policies in institutions and actual practice addressing specific constraints within a sectoral policy context, although I also um, did pick up uh, on what you were saying about the need to keep in mind systems and different aspects of systems and the way um, they interact. I thought that that was a, um, a really useful reminder. And, oh, I love this warning about... Um, uh, not overemphasizing the role of donors in policy dialogue European Commission, please sit up and take notice. Um, a few concerns, are things to reflect on. Um, the authors do recognize concerns about sustainability of these project benefits. And they say something, but perhaps not as much as one would have uh, liked, about 
unintended knock-on effects of interventions. Um, for example, I think you picked up on the possibility of AGI having a, an impact which was increasing uh, centralization. Um, but I think thinking about some of those uh, longer term, indirect, unintended knock-on effects is something to bear in mind in thinking about this sort of uh, approach. Um, and the authors also recognize the negative effects of a targeted approach or the possibility of negative effects um, of a targeted approach and of opportunism that you, you might actually reinforce ad hoc partial solutions. That's something uh, I think to bear in mind. I didn't see much focus on non-material incentives, or perhaps not as much as I'd have expected, say non-material incentives for frontline officials or for uh, communities of professional tax officials or, or what have you. That seems worth keeping in mind. And surprisingly little said about the importance of impact monitoring on something that's ongoing learning. And the thing I really wanted to mention was box five. <laughs> Um, because I think that does deserve some emphasis. This question of whether externally led interventions, even those that are aiming to facilitate local problem solving, risk inhibiting local indigenous action and leadership. Um, and that's very much what Local First is about. So the fourth point, which is, um, can donors respond to this? Um, and it seems to me that this body of recent research that I mentioned uh, really does point to the need for something of a sea change in conventional donor practice. Um, and not just um, uh, changes uh, in the current emphasis on short-term measurable results and um, uh, a focus on uh, high levels of spending in fragile states, but, but more um, a kind of a change in the, the mindset of um, some of the big donor agencies. Um, and I think this is really tough because how can they justify intensive long-term um, engagement to support incremental change with the likelihood that the impact will be modest, carry some real political risks, which again was something that was mentioned from the Tanzania um, study. You know, if you're going to um, establish relationships of trust, do you end up collaborating where <laughs> you're uncomfortable collaborating. Um, these initiatives may not spend much money, at least initially. And my worry is that this growing sort of enthusiasm for convening and facilitating local problem solving in the hands of quite a number of donor agencies will simply lose its cutting edge and it will become another fashion. And I can see, you know, a scramble really for donors acting as conveners and facilitators. Sorry if that sounds too sceptical. Um, so in other words, is this research um, encouraging donors to do things that they're inherently ill-equipped to do? So I've got three sort of responses to that. Um, I will end with a positive one. Um, there clearly are things that donors could do differently and could do better if they really thought this mattered. And one of the things that struck me about Tom Carruthers' recent book, and I think it was towards the end, he raised the question of how interested donors really are in achieving results. Um, and whether they really care enough. I think this is, actually, I think this is a, a, a hugely important point. For me, one basic test would be for some of the big donor agencies, whether they are really investing in and valuing country knowledge and relationships. Um, because without this, they, they don't stand a chance of identifying the real windows of opportunity. Uh, and the way in which these come and go and fluctuate and the results of projects in turn um, fluctuate. My second point is um, that if there is uh, this interest, and um, I think it exists in some parts of donor agencies, then I think this ODI research really can help. 
Um, I think it focuses on some specific constraints that can be addressed. I think it prompts thinking about what external um, actors can and can't do, less pol policy dialogue, more attention to nuts and bolts. Um, and I would add, if you're thinking about what donors can and can't do, what they're suited to doing, what external actors can and can't do, thinking about the global environment, the impact of um, OECD business and uh, governments is something that they ought to keep in mind. Um, and one of the, the things that comes across strongly from this research and the broader APPP, which I think is, is hugely important for donors to keep in mind, is to be alert to the risks of themselves creating policy and institutional incoherence and perverse incentives. Right? And so my final point, um, I actually don't see the big donor agencies making wholesale changes. I, I, think, it, I think it's unlikely. But what I think they could do uh, is nurture some of those pockets of excellence that do exist within donor agencies. Um, and one bit of useful future research, it seems to me, might be to examine not just um, su successful cases and explaining why they're successful, but the genesis of those cases, right? the origins of them. Um, why uh, did some individuals get together what were their background and incentives? What were their ways of working? To ensure that at least um, these sources of flexibility and innovation aren't stifled. Uh, because I do see some trends within some of the donor agencies I know and work with um, that make me worried about whether even these pockets of excellence uh, are in danger of being stifled. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sue. That, that's, I think, very helpfully and provocatively um, started off on the questions.